Hey, Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. It is Thursday, April 8th, so I hope you all have a very great day today. Uh, we had a lot of storms last night and a few tornadoes. I will go through that for you. I know how it is to be pressed for time. If you're in a rush, please use the links in the description to save yourself time. Now we have a very significant event that is going to happen on Friday, guys. I've been trying, I've been trying to warn for about four days now about what's going to happen on Friday. It is going to be a very, I think, catastrophic event. It has very high values of everything. And a couple of years ago, I used to live stream all year long for you guys, and I asked if y'all wanted it back. Matter of fact, it's going to be such a big event. I really think that the more people that streaming, the merrier, because it. Between everybody streaming, we should not lose one life. So I'm definitely going to be start live streaming again. And also, we're getting into hurricane season soon after we get it past all these tornadoes for the next month or so. And I will be live streaming that as well. So if you've never been here before, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure y'all hit the bell and get notifications because live stream will be for tomorrow. Now, just to show you what you're looking at, the two videos I have on the top left is your Cape Values. One is showing you right there by Texas. The other one is showing you the deep south. I do have a lot of information that I want to show you so you will be prepared because the most important thing is for people to be prepared for this event because I don't want to lose not one life. Between everybody streaming, like I said, we shouldn't lose one. That's That would be a great thing. So make sure that you hit the, the links in the description. I know how it is to be pressed for time. Get your information that you need. Be safe, guys. God bless you. So the big long rain band I'll be whipping by all the way from Ohio all the way down to Florida is what's giving y'all a tornado threat for today. It is going to create some possibilities for tornadoes. All in this area is your 2% chance for tornadoes for today into this afternoon. And the tornado threat has increased, guys. Now we have a big enhanced uh, section here. And if you remember, I told you yesterday that that surface low pressure pretty much goes over Dallas. And anything below it will be the worst. And it has moved further north. So that's not good for Dallas. But they do have it enhanced all the way from Dallas, Texas, all the way into Alabama, guys. So there will be a significant event happening. With the slight risk all in the yellow here, and then you have your marginal that is all in this green as this goes by. And then as you go into your Saturday, now you got an enhanced risk all in this yellow, and then you have a marginal in this green. And if you can see that the marginal goes right to the edge of Jacksonville, Florida. So everybody needs to be careful for what's going to happen with this storm. It is going to be a serious event. Now we had three tornadoes that actually touched down. And right where I saw that double core uh, cell, long live cell yesterday, is right where around that happened. And we had some bad tornadoes. They had one at 7.38 p.m., uh, four miles north, northeast of Bastrop. Trees were blown down and a home was damaged with residents trapped inside and possibly injured. And it was right below Log Cabin, Louisiana, and it's right in the middle of a lot of businesses and a lot of homes that was there. And they also had another one that was at 7.30 p.m. It was three miles north of Bastrop. Homes were damaged, at least one heavily damaged, and it resulted in an entrapment. And these were very close together. This one was south of Log Cabin. This one was just east of Crossit Road. And if you ask me, I believe this is probably that double core that we saw in the cells. Even though those, those, the readings from those cells are not set in stone, they do give you a good idea of what could happen. And if you ask me, it gave a real good idea because right here we have two tornadoes that happen side by side. And we saw a double vortex uh, long live cells in the forecast. So that's pretty accurate. And a third one was three miles west of Kilbourne, right on the edge of the border. And damage to homes on the Louisiana side along with trees down. And a TDS also was observed on radar. There is a good bit of homes that was in this area. So here's the main risk for your tornado threat from National Weather Service. You have your 10%, which is your enhanced. Jackson, Mississippi, Meridian, Mississippi, Vicksburg, Mississippi, Clinton, Mississippi, and Pearl, Mississippi. And as this carries on into Saturday, your 15% for your chance for tornadoes is in this yellow. That is New Orleans, Louisiana, Montgomery, Alabama, Mobile, Alabama, Columbus, Georgia, and Tallahassee, Florida. And you see a surface low pressure right around eight o'clock on Friday night. And it goes from, from eight o'clock to nine o'clock, it zings into Oklahoma. Now that's a very high ridge that is gonna get pulled on. It's a lot of power. And then as you go into your Friday evening, now you're starting to get these strengthening of a surface low pressure. You're getting these bands coming in. That is gonna give you a great potential for tornadoes. 
And this is going to be nocturnal, guys. This is 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the morning. Now you're getting a double band. It's just going to be waves of these of these bands coming by. And you can see the bowing out in them. So it is going to be some damaging winds that also will be with the storm. And it's going to go overnight in a 6 a.m., 7 a.m. And it's still got some strong rain bands. And now you can see some serious bowing. You got bowing coming out in this storm on this way. And you got bowing coming out on this storm this way. That's because of surface low pressure, a second one, is actually building up in the deep south. And here's a good shot of that. Right at 7 a.m. on Saturday morning, you can see the difference right here by Jackson, Mississippi. is bowing out to the north, and over here is bowing out to the south because you have that cold front coming in, and it is going to smash down this storm. At the same time, it just, it's going to transfer energy, and you're going to have a second surface low pressure that's going to carry it on. And by 10 o'clock at night, then it's really going to boom up. 11 o'clock at night, it gets even worse. Now you're getting some bowing out. Long track cell is still 12 o'clock. Very good bowing with some long lived cells. I'm showing that the main threat is going to be for Oklahoma, Texas, and for Arkansas, as well as some of southern Missouri. You can see the long lived cells coming with that. That is a super cell composite right there. Northern Louisiana, you will have a lot of storms, I do believe. And there is a chance for tornadoes for you and for Mississippi. But I do believe that Texas, Oklahoma, and Arkansas is going to be in the main threat of this big storm plus being nocturnal guys two o'clock in the morning look how much it grows at two o'clock in the morning three o'clock bowing out really good now you're getting a second band going from louisiana to mississippi and this is still going all morning long long live cells in northern louisiana now then as you go into five o'clock in the morning now northern louisiana is starting to see some long track cells with the possibility for those turning into tornadoes for you because this energy goes up and then it gets smacked down and on the way down is when it's going to be the worst threat for you you can see their long live cells as you go into six o'clock they're still tracking through north and northeast louisiana and at seven o'clock you can see it starts bowing out again you can see that curvature from the second low pressure building right there long live cells now these cells are starting to move to the north while these cells are moving to the south it is going to spread out it is going to be strong and here's a look again from the deep south so you can see the band grow right at midnight until the overnight hours and then it starts going all to the south and at this point this is five o'clock in the morning four or five o'clock in the morning and mississippi is covered tennessee is seeing it kentucky's seeing it southern illinois it goes all the way to alabama with a nice good band for saturday now you can see why this threat for saturday you have because this is going to carry over and then 8 o'clock in the morning on Saturday, you can see how it carries over for Alabama, for a panhandle of Florida. And then once you get into the afternoon, then you start getting really strong. Right in the center of the, of the surface level pressure, you can see the vorticity is pulling up these strong Cape values all the way down to southern Texas. It's just bringing all this energy up, as well as the big energy of the high dew points in the 70s. And as you go into 5, 6 o'clock in the afternoon, then it raises up real good, but at the same time, you have... The cold front coming in and it's going to smack down the energy so it is going to burst up real strong and you can see that the strong cape values go all the way up into southern arkansas and this is right at 9 p.m and then right when it gets to around midnight then it gets a good smashing and then the problems are going to rush to the south but your strongest point all across the board is right at 7 p.m on friday Cape value is over 5700 and i would say that's down here in northern mexico but we also have all this white right here for Texas. But it is almost 5,700 Cape values, and here's your surface low pressure, and this is forming right to the southwest of Dallas, Texas. And it's gonna strengthen up quickly as you go into the afternoon, three, four, five o'clock in the afternoon, then you have getting some strong Cape values from the surface low pressure as the cold front hits you. So on the bottom half of Dallas, is gonna be hectic. The top half is gonna be less violent. But when the cold front comes through, then it's gonna bring freezing temperatures for Northern Texas, but at the same time, it's going to cause, calm down all this energy in these dew points. So as you go into Friday morning, just for the deep south, you can see your Cape values rise up greatly. And then it gets real strong to 4,500 right around 6 p.m. This is where it's at, at one of its strongest points, as well as for Texas. But this is right before the cold front comes down and smacks down all them dew points, all that high energy, and just makes it a little safer for everybody. But until then, it's going to be some crazy amounts. But here's 9, 10 o'clock at night, and when it starts smacking down, now you can see why I say that the, the worst part is going to be for Arkansas, Oklahoma, Texas, southern Missouri, even northern Louisiana. Because by the time these bands come down, 
Now your Cape values are going way down. You're still at 3,700, but that's over the water. This is all around 2,000, 2,500, maybe a high one close to 3,000. But they get smacked down very fast as that cold front comes down. So if you have any tornadoes that will pop up for northern Louisiana or Mississippi, it will go down greatly, very fast. And the tornado perimeters are off the charts. We literally have about an 18 out of 10, guys. We have a very high chance. And this is right around 8 p.m. tonight on Thursday. And it's getting some strong tornado perimeters for Texas as all this energy builds up and pulls up. However, I don't see that any uh, storm cells will be in that area to take advantage of any rotation. But once you get into 1, 2 o'clock in the afternoon for tomorrow, then it's going to start bursting up for your best chance for your tornadoes. And you look at northeast Texas, that's 11 out of 10 right there. Then it grows to a 14 out of 10 at 4 p.m. And you have southeast Oklahoma, you have southern Arkansas, northern Louisiana, and northeast Texas all in the ringer at that point. And as you go through your afternoon, it gets even worse. And I'm showing the worst part is going to be towards Arkansas, guys, right before this cold front smacks down. 7 p.m. at night, 8 p.m., it gets very strong. Matter of fact, at 9 p.m., I'll show you another shot, but now your tornado primers are not only super strong right here for Arkansas and northern Louisiana, you also have some for, te for Texas as well. But now you're 18 out of a 10 chance for tornadoes in that whole area. And then when the cold front hits it, it smacks it down very quickly. And here's a shot where you can see good for Arkansas for the tornado primers. Right around 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock in the afternoon, it'll start building up some high values of almost 9 out of 10 chance for y'all. But once you get into the afternoon and get around 8, 9 o'clock, now you're getting at over to 18 out of 10, and it's all over northern Louisiana and Arkansas. And right before it spreads any further, then the cold front comes in and smacks it. You still have a high chance, 7 out of 10, and in lots of areas, but look how quickly it goes down. And you can see that where it travels from, you can see where the worst part is going to be for chances for tornadoes. Northern Louisiana, Northeast Texas, and Arkansas. You need to watch out, especially Southeast Oklahoma as well. And here's another look a little further south, so you can see for Louisiana and Southern Mississippi as well. Right around 4, 5 o'clock in the afternoon, it starts getting a lot of energy, a lot of possibilities. Even still for Northeast Texas, at 7 p.m., you still have very high possibilities. But right when you get around 10 p.m. at night, it's covering this whole area. This whole area, this, this is going to be a very catastrophic event, guys, with all this energy, with all this storm, and with that very cold, cold front coming in, smacking all this down all night long into the next morning. And when you look at the supercell composite, you can see how it grows from 7 p.m. all the way to 10 p.m. And the highest is at 9 p.m. And you have a 38 out of 50 chance for a supercell to grow at that time. And look at that, That's a, that is very strong. It goes straight from Northeast Texas all the way into Northern Louisiana into Southern Ar and Central Arkansas. That is gonna be your greatest threat and your greatest time that we really need to worry about, especially nine, 10 o'clock. And you can see as you go into your Friday morning, this is your dew points. You can see how it carries 50s and 60s all morning, all afternoon into the deep south and it gets very strong you even get some 70s and low 70s for texas all the way to alabama but right around three o'clock in the afternoon then your cold front starts coming in and it smacks all them dew points down it takes away a lot of the chances for any severe weather especially over mississippi arkansas and northern louisiana at this point now this cold front coming down is what's going to cause these, these rain bands to smack down into the deep south but at the same time it is what's going to protect a lot of people as well and your heavy rainfall amounts all the way until Sunday evening is going to be mainly for the southeast. You have anywhere from 4 to 5 inches all the way in, in the panhandle of Florida, southern Georgia. Alabama, you have two multiple hot spots of over uh, 3 to 4 inches. And then northern Mississippi, you also have a big chance for over 4 inches. And that's a little high, hopefully, for uh, my buddy Homestead. But that is a lot of rainfall, even the three inches around with the red. So there's going to be a lot of rainfall, man. So going into your Friday afternoon, the low pressure system moves up to the north. You have all these winds headed north on the ground level. I'm going to show you three different levels. The winds are going north on the ground level. They're coming down from the cold front. You can see these two just meeting up. And where that clash is at is where you're going to have your rotation. Then as you go through your evening, you can see them here. 
You got winds coming down, you got winds coming up, and it just clashes all the way into Arkansas. You have winds coming up in Arkansas, you have winds coming down in Arkansas. Look, these are directly at each other right there, aiming right for each other as the evening goes along. Then as you keep going, you can see you still got winds trying to come up, but now you're getting hit down with some, some winds coming from the north from that cold front. This is right here is your next layer up. This is your 850 millibar level. And you can see on your 850 bar level that you do have some very strong winds going from the south to the north. And you can see them coming from the west to the east also from the circulation, but you have very strong winds going from the south to the north. And then you get very strong winds as you go into your late Friday now you're getting 50 and 55 knot winds. You can see the strong winds stay all night long into the morning. Northern Mississippi, Tennessee, you get in on it. Northern Louisiana, as the cold front comes down. So you have very strong winds. Even southern Louisiana, you get some 50 knot winds as this carries over into Saturday. And this is where you get a serious crossover. Because now you're at your 500 millibar level, the top layer. You have winds going from the west to the east. So not only do you have winds coming from south to north, creating that northward push. Now you got the winds from the west to the east, and this is going to create very strong, look, 50s and 60s. This is going to create very strong wind shear. This is going to give you the rotation you need for this storm. And as you see our surface load pressure move towards Arkansas, so does the 50 miles per hour knot winds at the 500 millibar level. And it's going all the way down towards Texas into Louisiana, and it does carry over from west to east. At the same time, you got south to north, going down to 850 millibar level. So this whole area is going to be in threat for tornadoes. And it does transfer over to southern Louisiana and to southern Mississippi at the same time. All right, now, guys, I need y'all help. Help me get this word out there of what's going on. I'm sure people are going to hear about it already. But the more we notify, the better. We need to make sure that everyone ends up safely. That's another reason why I'm starting to live streaming again. And I will stay on it like I used to do for years for y'all guys. I love you guys. Help me share the word. Like the video, share the video, share the warning. God bless you all. I don't do all the hype. I keep a nice, calm atmosphere in my chat, in my live streams, because you need to be calm during these very serious events. Not pushing fear on people. So please, leave a tab open for me. I guarantee you, you will like the home feel that I give out. Now, I want to pray for you guys. God bless you all. May you all be safe through this event. It will be a big event, guys. Psalm 67. God, be merciful unto us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us. Selah. That thy way may be known upon earth, thy saving health among all nations. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. O let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For thou shalt judge the people righteously and govern the nations upon earth. Selah. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Then shall the earth yield her increase, and God, even our own God, shall bless us. God shall bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. Amen. God bless you all today. May you have a great Thursday out there today. We do have a significant event that is going to be starting on tomorrow. Once again, I can't ask you enough. Please help me share the word. Share the video, guys. All glory. Does go to God. God of Jacob. Amen.